We are getting late. Oh, this is beautiful. To most women, a wedding is one of the most important things in their lives. Married couples vow to forever be together for better or worse until death do them part. But it doesn't always end well for all couples. In Kenya, we met a woman called Hope Suzanne. My name is uh, Hope Suzanne. Like most women, Hope assumed to have her wedding after graduating from university. However, her wedding dreams never came true because her love relationship failed because her husband went missing on the wedding day. And it was only tearing on her wedding day. But I remember after the wedding, the church was okay. We finished the wedding. But something happened. After the, the, the reception, now we have already cut the cake. The, the man disappeared. What could have possibly caused the man to leave her wife alone at the wedding? When Hope was in her second year of university, she and her friends, all attending different universities, prepared a trip to Mombasa to go out and have fun. Hope was preparing for the trip even though she knew very well that she would never go on that trip because it required contributing a certain amount of money. Yet, she didn't even have a penny. Finally, on the last meeting of the trip preparations, Hope met a guy who loved her and volunteered to pay for her trip. After the meeting, he asked for my number, although I didn't give him that day, but later on, like even as uh, young people do, he got it from my friend and we started communicating. The guy kept contacting Hope and it wasn't long until they fell in love with each other. And that's when they started thinking about getting married and live together. When I heard that somebody wants to get, uh, to get married to me, I was excited like any other girl. Due to constantly busy schedules involving attending college and preparing for the wedding, Hope never got time to get to know the kind of guy she was going to marry. They met a few times in short moments because they used to meet while one had visited another at the church. But because Hope felt as though she had grown up, she thought it was necessary and decided to pray for her wedding. She says that God showed her many different things about the guy in those praying sessions, but she did not think or care about it. I remember this one particular time I was praying for my marriage. God showed me in a dream wearing a black gown. And I asked myself, why did I dream that dream? But after, after, after what I will share in the end, you will know exactly God was speaking to me. Bishop Dr. Damaris Kanye, who raised Hope, also insisted, saying that as soon as Hope told them about this wedding, at first they doubted her because they were not sure about this guy, even though they didn't know why they doubted him. We were very, very suspicious about that young man and our doubts were confirmed on the day of the wedding. In that rush when she was preparing for the wedding, Hope says she noticed bad habits in the guy while they were preparing to live together but ignored them because there were times she found him drunk at the bar. She was surprised because she thought the guy was an honest Christian who couldn't dare to consume alcohol. She says she continued to love this guy because he was good at hiding his true to the extent that he didn't make it easy for anyone to know that he wasn't an honest Christian. Also, he was good at begging for forgiveness for his faults, whether big or small. The guy constantly used to send Hope some gifts and Bible verses cards, which were clear that the guy learned very well about what the girl liked and disliked. His job was to ensure the prostate's security at the church. He was the kind of person who showed off his girlfriend to everyone, including his whole family. At the level he bends you into thinking that he's a very innocent kind guy. That act even made Hope fall in love with him a lot because she thought he was a good fearing guy. However, she doubted him sometimes and wanted to stop the wedding. Sometimes I could feel I really don't want to get married. But another thing it's about the society i wanted to do it for the society and this is the mistake young people are doing you are getting pressure from the society 
Hope and her lover stayed in love until the wedding day came. This is a day Hope says she will never forget in her life because it was a day characterized by tears and her wedding was dying. During the wedding day, I, I was so sad. The reason being, for example, the video man refused to come in the morning. In my culture, uh, they, they normally to come to the, the, the mother's place, the, ma the mother of bride's place to pick the bride. And so they used the wrong route. Instead of using the route that there was no traffic jam, the parents used the, 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 the wrong one and uh, which wa was with a lot of traffic. So a bride, uh, normally the, the weddings, the bride is taken at around maybe from 10 a.m. so that you can go to church and then in the afternoon you have the wedding. But th these people by even 1 a.m. they had not come. And then I started becoming sad. Now you can imagine this is a bride you have already put on your ground the 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 the, the gown the makeup uh, lady has already made you uh, a makeup and they have um, even uh, left they have left the bride very beautiful and so uh, that is the moment i started now seeing the reality i am getting married to a man that i already know but here i am it's my wedding day and i can't remember I started crying. Have you been crying? You know, the wedding is getting late, and from where I come from, I had I, I was living where I was staying with now this my foster parents, and where where the wedding was, it was very far. So I was imagining it's already one o'clock. They have not come. What about the traveling all the way to the church? It is too far, and I started crying. And I could feel that that pain within me because I was saying, or maybe he's de doing it deliberately. But people could call, my mom could confirm and say that, oh, anyway, they are still on their way. And that could give me hope. And uh, finally, we did the wedding. And now, this is where my story begins. Usually, the wedding day is when your partner has to be closer to you than any other day. But that's not what happened on the day for Hope. All the wedding events went well and smoothly. Also, things went well at the church, but the groom went missing after cutting the cake. But I remember after the wedding, the church was okay. We finished the wedding. But something happened after the, the, the reception. Now we have already cut the cake. The, the man disappeared. It was a tough puzzle for Hope because she didn't know where to go after the wedding since her husband was the only one who knew where they were supposed to go. We are, I'm in the field with my gown with no husband. That's how I, I was left. Then after some time he reappeared and now my best mate asked where are you going now after this? He doesn't even know. He was asked, have you booked any hotel where you are going? He, ha he was quiet. He said it's a surprise. So he wanted people to go but we, were, we didn't have anywhere to go. So that's how my, my life started being miserable. But afterwards, I came to realize we are going to his mother's place. We have started the family and uh, we are at the mother's. Everything the mother used to cook for us, the mother used to do everything for us. So I am, I'm here, I'm married, but living with the parents. Hope continued to pray for her marriage as she used to before her wedding. One day when Hope was sleeping, she dreamed terrible dreams. Only she said that God wanted to show her something about her marriage again because she later witnessed those dreams in real life. I slept that night and when I slept, I saw myself in that dream. I was kidnapped, but the, the people who kidnapped were ladies and there were many, many ladies. Mm -hmm. These ladies came and uh, took me like in a, in, a, in, a, in a forest. They wanted to tie me on a, on a tree. One of them said, I have forgotten a knife. Uh, maybe they wanted to kill me. Mm -hmm. I have forgotten a knife. 
When she turned, there was a very big name tag behind her when she turned. And that name tag was written her name. Her name was Hilda. And I was like, I saw that name very clearly. In the dream. In the dream. Mm. Hilda. Then, this other girl, I did not see her name, but you will hear later how I'm going to meet her. Because these people who are kidnappers, I will later see them in the physical. She said that even though the women were many, she memorized their faces. And later when she met them in real life, she recognized them. She woke up in the morning as usual. As a woman, she began cleaning the house. As she lifted a carpet to clean under, she saw a piece of paper under the carpet. When she opened the paper, there was the name Hilda and a phone contact written on the paper exactly as she dreamed last night. Hope called the number on the paper and the owner was called Hilda. Hope asked if they could meet and talk. When they met, Hope was shocked because the girl who wanted to kill her in her dream looked exactly like the one she had met. However, Hope was still in college, and even though her house was far from college, she would go to college and come back to her house as a wife. Once Hope had exams, she talked to her husband, and they agreed that she should stay at the college for a week because it would help her do her exams well. I, the same same day he, he, he dropped me, that's when he picked another woman and brought him in the house. He had dropped in, dropped me after uh, 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 on a Sunday. Then on Tuesday, uh, I stayed in school in Tuesday. When I said, I'm a married woman, what am I go going to, to, to remain in school doing? And I have a class on Thursday, uh, uh, an exam in Thursday, on Thursday evening. So I have enough time to go and even revise at home. So I took my, my I went to the library, took my books and went to the to, I, w I went to the um, to to the to my home. When I arrived, I'm like, I opened the door and I started seeing strange clothes in the bathroom. I see strange clothes. When I went to the my wardrobe, I saw other clothes. So I called the mother and I called the mother-in-law and the mother-in-law came. Father-in-law came later and we waited for this people to come but instead the the lady came first when the lady came first she was shocked to find people in the house because i had my own key and he was given the key by my husband so she came she was shocked she she could not even understand and you remember already i could recognize this lady so she start stood there she 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 could not even like a statue there she could not talk then later on my uh, my my husband came and uh, we tried to solve the issue but he knew how to pretend he behaved like he has changed he said no actually he was he was the one who was throwing even the things of that woman out and the that yeah the same day and the woman left and we were <laughs> we were late again now to for me to forgive him and and this naive girl also forgave her forgave him once again even though this man broke her wife's heart countless times he could feel ashamed sometimes such as when she tried committing suicide and i remember this time he sent me a message when i was in school and he told me that uh, you have been the best wife ever but from today i think I, I i want you to rest from all the things i had been doing to you and i think uh, because of the many things i don't think i have a reason to live he also sent the same message to the mother telling her you have been the best mother but it's like i put you a lot into shame uh, because of the things i've been doing and so i think i i have to end my life so we thought it was jokes and he took poison mm. I was in school, I was called, we went to the hospital, and can you imagine how I loved the marriage and this man? I stayed with him in hospital for two weeks, sitting on that bench, waiting for my husband to recover. And when he went to the, he went for counseling, 
he said that if I, because that time, you know, I had, uh, because of the many scenarios of women, I had, I had told them, him I want to leave. And I think he, this was a strategy for him to stop me to leave, you know. And when he realized I'm leaving, that's when he took poison. And uh, thank God he did not die because the hospital was near their home and uh, he was taken care of. And I forgave him once again. Regardless of the times she forgave him, this man never broke his bad habits because he used to lie to her that he was sent abroad for work. But Hope caught him sleeping with other women in the hotel. It came to a point when this man betrayed Hope in need to kill her or send her to prison. I remember he, I saw, he had told me he has gone to another country, but I met him uh, crossing the road with a woman. You know, they were going where they, they had parked the car. And he had lied to me, he has left the car in the airport, he has gone to another, and he was calling me, you know, with a WhatsApp, telling me he's in that other country, and tell me how it is, how they have arrived, you know. And <laughs> I remember when I met him now, he decided to come home. He came home, took my phone, and that's how I left that marriage, actually. He came home, took my phone, and wrote a message to the woman, uh, to a, that certain woman, and abused. And you know, you know, in Kenya there is law when you abuse someone, they can report you to the police. That's how they she they went took took. You see, he has taken my phone number, he has sent it to the woman, and then that woman and him they took me to the to the police and that the policemen started looking for me I was summoned to go to the police and they harassed me I was taken to a cell for one day and uh, thank God God intervened and I came out but when I came out the policeman as the one who did me counseling and they told me that such a man if we were bad people if he had decided to pay tax they could have killed you Thank God he paid policemen. Ah, he, 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 he asked us to, to call you because if it was, uh, it was any other person uh, like that, they could have already killed you. So you better leave this man because the, there is no marriage here. This is a policewoman that, that did me counseling. After she heard all those plots from the police, she opened her eyes and looked back at how she had forgiven him many times. This time, she decided to part ways with him. This time I decided enough is enough. Hope says that no other woman could bear her husband's faults because she also wanted to abandon him and go. Still, she couldn't bring herself to do it because she did not want to break her marriage since she never wanted anyone to find out that she had problems in her marriage because she was even a marriage counselor at the church. So the time came and Hope separated from her husband, continued the journey of life alone and continued to serve God, which she still does today. I have continued serving God. I have graduated. I have gone back to school and I graduated once again and I'm still serving God. I'm still uh, uh, encouraging people. So if you are there and maybe you are going, through, maybe you are a woman of God and you don't know who to talk to when you share sharing is a, a journey that you start in healing and when you share because for me i kept everything inside me you can share i am here i can you can reach me i can i do online counseling i do physical how, counseling how do you do and i you can meet me through um, my youtube channel I know you can get encouragement from there. It is Susan Hope. When you just Google Susan Hope in my YouTube channel, in Facebook is Susan Hope again. And also in uh, Instagram is um, Susan Hope 98. Thanks for watching. This is Afrimax English. Please remember to subscribe.